my name is Arja Flinkman, and I will uh, moderate this session, but the most important thing here is the young people around me who have their strong voice on how we would and should change the world concerning gender stereotypes. It is a very important topic on European level and in each country, also on regional level. And I really much like the, what the Commissioner said, that uh, skills do matter. Skills are for everyone, no matter what gender, whether we have disabilities, whatever ever counterparts that they're back, back us. So we, we all, all young people, they have right to uh, choose their career paths, the skills they want to develop. And uh, we are here to listen to their voice, how we could improve the world in that sense. We not only hear inspiring stories from our speakers, uh, Lola Bays, uh, Kai Nissen, Elfie Descampentris, and Nady Ordis beside me, and we'll also explore how to tackle stereotypes in their working life and also probably in their studies. We hear the stories and then we can in the end discuss with you uh, on this topic. Lola Bays uh, is virtual merchandising specialist uh, and uh, focusing on practical, technical skills, digital tools, etc. And she is uh, really a champion preparing for World Skills 2024 this year in Lyon, right? And Kai Nissen is a nurse at Orthopedic. Uh, Orthopedic surgery ward in Abendra and currently enrolled in nursing program also. And one of his uh, motives is uh, optimize help to the patients he takes care of. And that's very nice and important motive in, 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 in the work. Then Elfie Descarbentris is enrolled uh, in the work study program specialized in industrial engineering and robotics. And she is French champion in mobile robotics, as we heard in, in the main session today. And then Nady Ortiz is a global talent acquisition leader for Software One company. So we welcome all the panel speakers. But now in the beginning, we warm up a little bit. Uh, so uh, let me introduce also Vera Leonor from DG Employment. That was a department that uh, shouldn't be mentioned, but it is something <laughs> in the European Commission, as we heard. And uh, now we warm up, up a little bit how uh, he te she tests the, our knowledge on, on gender stere stereotypes. And afterwards, she will also give us a quick look at the important uh, uh, talk about gender stereotypes and job training and how, how we can tackle, tackle these uh, issues. The floor is yours, Vera. Thanks a lot, Arya. Um, it's very nice to be here with you. And uh, we have prepared a Slido, so you can see a QR code in front of you. And just like in, in the panel before, you scan it and uh, it takes you to the web page Slido. If it doesn't work through camera, you can also Google um, Slido and then our um, hashtag is gender for this question round. And then we're gonna dive into some questions to see a bit what you know about gender stereotypes in vocational training already. So we wait a bit until you connect. And maybe, yeah, we can activate uh, the first question that we have for you. Have you heard of gender stereotypes before? That's great, it's working. <laughs> That's very good. We see a lot of you already discuss it quite often, maybe also because you, choose, um, you, cho <laughs> you chose the session to join. Um, that's very encouraging. Now, the second question is, in your training and your professional environment, do you think there are gender stereotypes? Okay, <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> 
Okay, so really for the big majority, we can see you, you believe there are gender stereotypes around your profession. Okay, very interesting. Then we can go to the next question. So we know that often gender stereotypes affect um, what kind of training and what kind of career we choose. And according to you, is this a problem? Would you say this is a problem? Okay, so again, a lot of you think it's problematic. Some are a bit split. Some say maybe a bit that it's problematic. It's very interesting. We're going to discuss about it, and, and the answer is not, uh, not so easy. So um, very nice. Okay, and now the last question, and a bit more open, is you put in a word uh, of a profession um, where you think there exists a lot of gender stereotypes. So this could mean there's a lot of women and very few men only, or the other way around. So kind of imbalanced gender in the professions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so we see very dominantly construction, hairdressing, nursing, um, military, architecture. Super interesting. Okay, thanks a lot for this poll. Um, you, I can see you already have quite um, a good understanding on, on gender stereotypes and vets. And you're actually very right, like these professions that we see here um, on the Slido are really those that um, ha have the highest gender imbalance in, in the EU. So we know that gender imbalances already start in training. So you are students of vocational education and training, and actually we know that students in vocational training at the age of 17 or older, that boys, half of them pick um, the, the sectors manufacturing, construction, and engineering. And for girls, it's, it's quite different. So one-fourth of girls uh, picks health and welfare. So a lot of them become nurses, for example. One-fourth um, picks business and administration, for example, be becoming an accountant. And then another one-fourth um, picks um, uh, services, so something like hairdressing, for example. So we can already see in training, we pick different career pathways. So we ask ourselves, is this a problem? And it can be for several reasons, and I'm going to guide you through it, and then you make up your own opinion about it. So the first idea I want to give to you is that we know that at the age of 15 in school, girls and boys perform equally well in mathematics and in technical subjects. So it's not that girls don't pick technical subjects because they're not able to do it. They're very much able to do it. But there comes something into play with gender stereotypes. And gender stereotypes is what society, your parents, your teacher tells you that you're good in. And from a young age, girls are told, oh, you're very good in social competence, you're good with people. And that is what we focus on. And also, it depends on what we're told we're good at, where we see ourselves going afterwards. And equally for, for boys, it's often the more technical mathematic skills that are highlighted. So these gender stereotypes make us think about ourselves in a certain way, depending on our gender. Um, and for example, a boy might not choose nursing, become a nurse, um, health, because it might be perceived as too female from, from society. Then a second idea I want to give you is that we know that male-dominated, so professions with a lot of men, IT, engineering, these um, professions have a better pay often and better um, career prog progression possibilities. So if girls don't pick these more technical professions, we know that they miss out a lot on, on pay and, and career opportunities. So this can be really a problem because we don't want half of the population to lose out on it. 
At the same time, think how gender stereotypes and how we um, put value to females, so we associate certain things with female and cer certain things with male. Why is it that in health the pay and the career progression is worse than in other, in other um, sectors? So it's also gender stereotypes come into play um, because we put less value to this. But in contrary, we would think during the COVID crisis, it was very well shown that without nurses, male or female, we would not have made it through this health crisis. So think about it also, how it influences how we see certain sector and the value of work. And then thirdly, we know that the most gender imbalanced professions, let's say construction, installing solar panels, coding, are the, also um, the skills that are in, in high shortage right now. So we lack really workers to do these kind of things. So this is not only a problem because we miss out on opportunities, on jobs. As I said, if, if um, boys don't decide to go into nursing, we, we, have, we lack nurses, right? So this is a problem not only for the individual, but also for, for the firms, for the business, for the economy, and for the society. At the EU, we have um, high ambitions. We want to be um, a digital economy, so we need a lot of IT specialists, but we also want to move to the green transition, so we want to become climate neutral. So we need the workers with the right skills there. And if half of the population, for example women, don't choose in the technical professions to, for example, install solar panels, we miss out on this and we're not gonna be able to reach our ambitions. So, and this is why um, we at the EU care a lot about gender equality, both in training and the labor market. And this was just the first idea into the topic. And now I'm very much looking forward to hear from our panelists and it's back to Arya. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, Vera for these insights and uh, now let's learn more about the speaker's journeys. We have selected them with uh, care to illustrate that working in a male or female dominated area is really possible for everyone. And, uh, but as you can imagine, it was difficult to find them and, and concerning this topic, I think we are really fortunate uh, having found these real treasures to, to give us uh, some hints how to improve this situation and develop for further this uh, gender equality. Uh, so let's hear from Kai. Kai, in the healthcare sector there is a majority of women compare, compared to male workers. Can you tell us more about your career and how you ended up choosing nursing career? Yeah, I love to talk about my career. Um, I, in my high school, I asked myself, what do I like and what do I not like? Uh, what I'm good at, what I'm not good at. And I always uh, liked being around people, um, being together people. Um, yeah. And with that, I took two internships within my high school uh, at some kindergartens where I um, enjoyed being around people. Um, with that knowledge to be around people, I choose to, after my high school, to find a school where I have a good balance between the internships and the school, because my grades wasn't that good in, at school. Um, with that, I found a school that offered me an education to being a care helper, where I started at a nursing home, uh, where I really got connected with the elderly people, get connected with the work to help others. Um, yeah. And that motivates you. And that motivated me uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, that motivated me to took uh, education as care helper, afterwards a, nursing assi a nurse assistant, and now my study to being a nurse. Thank you, Kai. And uh, now could you tell us more about your experience, how your family or friends, uh, how they reacted when you chose this career path? Thank you. Um, my family was really supportive when I chose to start in the health sector. Um, they support me with, yeah, they supported me all the way uh, throughout my career. Um, the 
but they also <clears throat> they're also asking me if I was sure to start a career where the payment wasn't that high as in other careers, um, but the the payout from being around others uh, was the better benefit for me. Um, and from my experience with patients, I also got a lot of good feedback that they enjoy male, male nurses because I can't tell if that's because they are so rare, if you want to put it that way, but male patients have uh, really enjoyment to being also have other male uh, to talk about. Thank you, Kai, for sharing these insights. It's very interesting, and uh, probably we should pay a little bit more to nursing, nursing specialists to to uh, attract more male male uh, participants. Uh, thanks a lot, Kai, really, and Lola. You are visual uh, merchandising, and it sounds very technical. Job, can you share us with what what really it includes your job? Um, to do this job, uh, I think you need uh, creativity and curiosity uh, because they are the foundations of this job, in my opinion. Also, you have to search always the new trends and uh, you have to be versatile because it's a really complete uh, work. Um, because we have an IT part uh, to think about the project and uh, after we have the realization of the decor so we used a lot of materials like wood and paint or something else <laughs> and uh, a lot of tools also um, like jigsaw, drills, hammer, etc. And finally, you have uh, the finishes part. So we install the decor and um, we put the, for example, we put the clothes on the mannequin. So you need an eye for details. Thank you very much, Lola. It, it uh, seems that technical tasks don't appeal to girls and women, but it doesn't seem to be the case for you. So you have really, really uh, task uh, skills for that. Uh, how uh, it seems like a sector that could be appealing to anyone? Do you, you agree that, uh, or is it predominantly female sector? I think this job is for everyone, of course, um, but uh, based on my experience, uh, I'd say it's a female-dominated profession. Um, in my opinion, the men don't dare to go into it because it's, um, it's very close of the fashion universe and uh, it's still stereotyped. By the I don't know. <laughs> um, but as I can said, um, it's a really complete job and all men uh, can find their happiness in. Thank you very much. Uh, it seems that we really have the problem like uh, Vera started his, uh, her, her insight in, into this uh, topic. Uh, most of uh, girls, uh, they choose the secondary high education before uh, uh, or after comprehensive school, and uh, they don't uh, choose vet sector at all. And in the vet sector, we have these technical uh, careers, technical uh, programs, and then we have shortage for technical skills uh, uh, specialists in, in the working life uh, after it. So that's the first step where we have to really equalize uh, uh, 
secondary high and vet uh, education. It's secondary level education in, in or, or around Europe, and we should support uh, students, pupils, to, to choose also vet, vet education. On the other hand, as Vera mentioned too, that we have very uh, uh, low percentages in some sectors concerning male or female workers. And I would add here also, what, are, what about the uh, people that do want, don't want to mention their gender? So there are also those, uh, those uh, genders in, in European uh, work market. But this is very, very, very important and interesting topic, and re we really have to listen to what these young champions have, have to say us as uh, advice how to develop further. So we have also Elfie with, with us here, Elfie. Uh, I'm pleased to welcome you, as unfortunately, engineering is one of the fields uh, where there is less um, female, female uh, workers. Can you tell us more about your motivation in your career story? Yes, so about my motivation is uh, this sector. Um, I can say that it's a sector with a future. And um, we can be engineer in uh, many fields, like uh, medicine or industry. Uh, and it's a job that can develop our creativity, our, our skills competence, and we can uh, improve our skills uh, each day with, with, uh, with a new innovative project. Um, for example, I work with a company uh, that all the projects are different, and uh, each day we have to learn more about the new technology. So it's a very uh, stimulant uh, work and a uh, very stimulant uh, sector. I would also like to ask you, because in the main session you said that you are planning to move to uh, Canada or uh, Australia. Uh, do you have any tips for us how to keep you, you know, in, in Europe? <laughs> I want to travel in all around the world so uh, I can stay in Europe. Uh, it uh, will be good for the culture and uh, take the skills I can take. And uh, with my company, I, I have to install some uh, machine in uh, Europe, uh, maybe in uh, Hungary this year. So uh, I will travel in uh, Hungary. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Elfi. So we have had uh, great insights from every, every panelist here, and uh, let us discuss uh, how we can fight gender stereotypes also in the future concerning the education and also the, the working life. So Lola, based on your experiences, um, you often need to work with tools and you are very handy. What should be done to encourage more young people to choose uh, your, your career path? Um, I think to encourage the youngers to come in the technical careers, uh, we have to put less stereotypical uh, communications on the social medias. Also, um, we need to count on their families and friends to encourage and put them uh, not to give up. And for me, the most important point is um, I tell them to have confidence in themselves and uh, in what they like to do. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lola. And now the same question to you, Kai. Uh, how could we encourage uh, more uh, male students to healthcare? I think it's one of the hardest questions to answer, and I don't have the answer for it um, at the spot. But I like to take the essence of healthcare is to help others. Uh, same as a policeman or a firefighter, the essence, is, the essence is to help others. And if you feel the essence to help others, healthcare is 
an option uh, and I would encourage all men, young men, um, older men uh, at all ages to take an education in healthcare if you feel a uh, joy and need to help others. Um, it's also important to mention that we need to promote the healthcare as a uh, not um, stereotype, as Lola mentioned, with one gender, but uh, both genders, uh, not both genders, but all genders. Um, yeah, that's really, really important. And also, in healthcare, it's enjoyable that you can level up with your skills uh, in the organization you're working in, so you can get maybe a leader position, maybe uh, other positions. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Kai. I think these are important points, how we communicate the careers and the, the uh, vet, uh, like the sectors for, for each one to, to choose. And um, then, Elfi, how about engineering degrees and jobs in robotics, how we encourage young people to choose that path, also females? Uh, so I think it's very important to have uh, some uh, diversity in a team because uh, we are all different but uh, complementary with uh, men uh, or female. And I think it's important to talk more about uh, robotics to the young people to encourage them uh, to make a career of uh, robotics. Um, and it's important to believe in your dream and to follow through. And uh, like uh, Lola said, it's important to to be confident uh, in uh, our project. Um, and we have to show that women do great things, I think, and that she doesn't be afraid to afraid, sorry, to um, to show their competence. And, uh, that's it. Thank you, Elfie. I, I think one of the messages we heard also in the morning is that we should encourage the confidence, what you mentioned, and one of the ways could be that f more funding to mobility to wet sector. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, but you all have interested um, messages, and last but not the least, I'm pleased to give the floor to Nadi. And um, uh, Nadi, you work at, uh, in uh, HR and IT company, and we know that IT sector faces the challenges to recruit mm -hmm. persons. So, uh, uh, how would you address this situation? Well, thank you very much first for the invitation and the opportunity to be here. Uh, this is a topic that I'm really passionate about. And yes, it's no secret that in the IT sector, uh, we have a higher percentage of men than women. And um, IT companies, this has become a big topic for, for IT companies. I'll talk about three initiatives that we are doing at Softone One to address this situation. So the first one is uh, the creation of a Softone One Academy. So basically, we know that finding professionals with all of the experience and all of the knowledge is very difficult in the market because we have a very competitive market. Um, so what we decided to do is uh, train and um, educate all of recent graduates, apprentices, and career changers who have an interest in IT. So what we're doing under this program is we're training them, we're providing them with all of the knowledge that they need to know on latest technologies, on programming languages or project management. Um, we train them for three months, and if they successfully complete the program, then we offer them a full-time employee. Uh, and I do have to say that well, we pay them while we teach them. And we make sure uh, through this initiative that in every cohort or in every group of people that we have hired, there is a percentage of women being represented per each cohort. So that's one of the first initiatives. And I think aligned with this initiative, uh, we are doing a lot of outreach programs and education. So we're actively engaging with universities, with schools. We're doing school visits because I think that when people in general think about IT, we think about 
developers and maybe boring jobs and something that is not fun. And I think those are myths because there are so many roles within the IT sector that uh, people don't know about. And we want to make sure that we're inspiring women uh, to understand the variety of opportunities that we have in the IT sector. Right, so we're, it's not just developers, it's business analysts, it's uh, people that are into sales as well, but into the IT sector. So there is a whole bunch of uh, opportunities and we wanna make sure that we provide the right information to young women to inspire them and for them to consider IT as a, as a career. And the third thing that we're doing is also offering flexible um, work policies. So we understand the importance of work-life balance, right? We all have lives and we want to live our lives and we want to make sure that we have a job that understands that. So most companies are now trying to offer flexible, flexible work arrangements. Um, because we have students, we have people who are going to the university, we have hybrid um, models of working as well. So I think that these are three initiatives, these are three of the things that uh, we're doing in Software One to, to address the situation, yeah. Thank you very much, Nady. I, I would like to highlight the three points. First of all, the apprenticeship. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, more common for male students, and it's uh, in in uh, all in, te in all technological sectors. It's the same same thing. And then um, you mentioned this variety of uh, opportunities. Probably we should uh, improve our communication concerning the all the uh, the uh, areas of working all the sectors and then this uh, this last thing was also interesting these flexibilities in working arrangements would you like to comment further on those Sure. Yes, and I see this happening um, most of the time. We go out to job fairs, we go out to career fairs, and I do see more men uh, applying for, for this kind of opportunities. And again, I think that one way of how we could all address this is, I think it's about information, what you mentioned, is understanding the opportunities. I work in the IT sector, I worked in human resources, but I am part of the IT sector. And I've learned uh, about the different opportunities that even I, as an HR person, have if I want to go into the IT world. And I think that that's something that we could do better, is communicate and, and, and spread that information. Um, and the second thing, very important, and I think that there was a before and after COVID, especially for all companies, right? Before we used to go to office every single day, you needed to go face to face, being in your desk from nine to five. But I think that after COVID, um, all of that has changed. And now young people um, and women and male, everyone evaluates the, a company that offers that hybrid model. Um, so we, we know that and we understood the importance of it. So we make sure that we're offering these benefits as part of our, our company, yeah. One, one last question to you, Nady. Um, uh, what about IT uh, involvement in recruiting processes? Do you think there sh could be some kind of more transparent process not to uh, prefer male or female applicants? Oh, that's, a, that's a very interesting question, right? Because I think what we're discussing when we talk about stereotypes is also unconscious bias. Right. So we're trying to mitigate this in recruitment processes. And one of the ways that we're doing this is utilizing some AI tools. For example, um, the way that we write a job description for someone who's junior or young is completely different than the way we do to target someone who has experience. Right. The way that we speak to young people is different in order to get their attention than we would do with someone who, who already has years. Uh, and there's tools out there that help us uh, transform and, and sort of um, use a very specific language. Mm -hmm. We also use these tools to create uh, gender neutral job descriptions. So I think there, there are tools that help us do that. 
um, and uh, the training on hiring managers and interviewers about unconscious bias. So I do think everything too extreme is not good. I do think that AI is very useful if used correctly, and definitely it helps us in, in recruiting. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, would there be any questions you would like to ask from the audience or comment on some of the topics raised up during this panel discussion? Also on the Slido, you have the option in the Q&A to um, ask your questions. Also, if you're watching online, please insert your questions and we try to answer them. So, uh, at all, if we look back in the past when uh, uh, you had no tools to use, for example, to constructions, uh, you had to uh, use your physical strength to to do these jobs, and uh, that, that I think that's the reason why males were better in these sorts of jobs, uh, and. Uh, I think that uh, physicality still remains in today because uh, in Hungary, in my environment, I see that in constructions people usually still use uh, their hands to construct buildings or things like that. And I think that, do you think any of you uh, that if the ecosystem, no, sorry, the ecologics were equal in every part of Europe, in every city of Europe, uh, would it uh, help these sorts of uh, jobs to be equally uh, made by women or men? If I understood uh, right, first, first, can you switch off the microphone, please? Uh, if I understood right, we, we should probably uh, think about uh, these physical things you mentioned in the beginning. I don't think healthcare se sector, for instance, is less physical than construction. So we could, with equipment and with uh, robotics, with uh, automatization, uh, we, we, we should uh, change, develop the, all, all the uh, jobs we have in the, in, the working, in the work market. That's one thing, I, I, I think. And um, you are, uh, asked also whether the, the ecosystem is similar in, throughout Europe. That, that's, unfortunately, that's not true. So we, we should and could uh, share the best practices concerning, for instance, green transition, which, which is... Uh, uh, mentioned already today that we need uh, technical skills and and those uh, to to foster the climate uh, or the, not foster the climate change but uh, hinder the climate change and foster the technical skills uh, to to cope with this problem. So probably we are already doing like. Um, Tim van Rie is also here. He is uh, running the working group on green transition. We are sharing on uh, European wide these uh, best practices and the compen next compendium is about to be published <laughs> so so lo look look that when you have have time but thank you for these questions uh, <clears throat> just to react sorry just to react to the the question uh, is true that um, promoting um, gender equality in construction because i come from construction so i know the subject uh, one uh, solution is to promote health for workers um, because construction, as we know, is a, a health issue for workers. And it's true that a help of uh, machine guidance, uh, uh, AI, everything we can bring into uh, construction, uh, I think could help uh, attract women to the profession because uh, one of the cliches but which is true it's uh, uh, will I have to carry heavy loads will I have to uh, do painful things uh, and it is true that uh, sometimes it happens 
but the more we modernize the profession, the more we uh, <coughs> help the construction uh, universe to um, become more um, ecological friendly, blah, 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 and also uh, health um, caring, let's say, uh, easier for people not to uh, have um, health problems in the long term, then it will attract uh, a lot of different uh, public and women especially. Thank you very much for this supportive comment. To, to we can make make change. Any anybody else? Yeah, please. Yes. Hello. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily a question or more of a reflection also for you, but for me, one of the biggest problem is also the gender wage gap. That in female dominated sectors, it's like they are normally paid less than in the male dominated sectors. So I was just wondering if that's also something to consider in terms of like breaking down the gender stereotypes, um, especially in the female dominated sectors. F question mark, <laughs> something. So thank you very much for raising up this issue as well, because it is true that in, in male dominated, in female dominated, uh, careers or uh, sectors, it's uh, the wage is lower. And uh, on European level, I think uh, one euro for uh, a male is uh, 0.8 euros or 0.7 euros at the moment uh, to the female, to, to the female workers uh, across the sector. So it's very uh, important point also. But probably now it's uh, time to little bit wrap up this, this session if you don't have any oh, additional, okay. Feel free. I promise to be quick. Um, no, I, I will. I very thank you very much for all your inputs and uh, presentations and so on. Um, I was just wondering because we are talking about gender st stereotypes and a lot of research show that actually children are getting those gender stereotypes really, really early, like sometimes already at the kindergarten um, age. Um, so I would be interesting if if someone. Uh, I don't know if you have the time, but if someone would have some ideas about how we can really change that. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. So we have to start developing the system from kindergarten level. So it's, it's tr true because uh, it's in, in our society, in the whole, whole society, so there are these gender stereotypes. But to wrap a little bit uh, together, so the wage gap was raised, it's reality, we have to do something about that, the uh, support for mobility and health care system for, uh, for also male, concerning male, like construction male, uh, male sectors, that it, it will uh, attract more female, female workers and applicants. Probably uh, improve a little bit this uh, recruiting process in, in all institutions. So uh, I think um, we have heard today from our panelists great, great ideas and uh, we, we would uh, say that it should be possible for everyone, every young student, especially young students, to apply for the career she or he dreams of and uh, fulfill uh, her own uh, dreams uh, concerning the uh, taking into account the motivation inside of us, uh, for instance, Kai mentioned that uh, you have the motivation to do something and then you can choose a career you would you would like to choose and uh, um, my dream and probably uh, as all we dream about uh, gender equality in all sectors. Wouldn't it be wonderful that people just choose career paths, choose uh, education paths uh, on, on their own, based on their own dreams, what they would like to be, how they would like to change the world. And we really have a lot of work on European level, on local level, on regional level, on worldwide level to change the world because we, we have to do something to do some things that are there, uh, like green transition. We have to change that. Like digitalization, we do have to change that. So let's try us the best to attract all people to choose their own path and not uh, like uh, hindering them to, to fulfill their own, own dreams. And I also encourage families and friends to support, like, like you mentioned, it's, it's a very important uh, support from them the ones that are close to you, and then we have to balance the working life and the 
the other life because we are humans we we, we have just one life we can't choose like uh, this life and this life but thank you very much for your interest and i'm so happy that this class is full of uh, audience and uh, very much I, and warmly i would like to thank all the panelists you are super people super powerful european <laughs> development thank you